we're back on a dump near a home and boy is it a glorious day Hi everyone, here we are back in our own patch just down the road and we're going to have a little look and see what we can find here on the dump today. But I've already come across something intriguing, interesting and I think found art, but the kind of found art you can't take home with you. And I know everyone says I see dragons everywhere, but come with me and see what you think. Ooh, what have you got to show us, Mr. Johnson? If you come round here yes. and take a look straight on at that. Right. It does look to me like a dragon's head coming up out of the ground. Oh yes, you've got a, a ear that's flopped over almost looks like yes. a puppy dog, but you've got floppy ears. But oh, very nice. The way the wood is burnt, the charcoal effect, the scaling on oh, it yes. is absolutely brilliant. It's lovely. And you can see the eye here and the eyebrow. You know, admit eye, he's right? had a bad day. But um, <laughs> yes. I de but then look at the others around you. Look at the workmanship of the fire. I know when we leave the house, we come out and we think we're looking for bottles, we're looking for history, but I just love to stop and see what's there. And for me, I hope you feel the same. They're gorgeous. But we haven't forgotten where we are because right at our feet, there are clues to the fact we're gonna have other finds. Because just here. Oh, it's a little dinky bottle. It's a poison bottle. I didn't know that till I picked Ooh, it up. Oh, isn't that lovely? And a little crap. Oh, a little medicine bottle. Another bottle. There. And as you were filming, uh -huh. I noticed just over by here. But before you go over there, I just spotted this. Is this glass? Hmm, it's unusual. Bit of a pin tray, I think. So what do you see, Mr. Now, Johnson? Over here, obviously somebody's burnt a load of stuff with mm -hmm. nails in. So there's enough nails to probably build a fence around the garden with. Yep. But see you. Oh, there's another bottle. I wonder if that's Fletcher's sauce. No, no, we're oh, too God. far away. Oh, yes. we're, not, we're forgetting now. Now, if we were in Yorkshire, yes. But here, it's more likely to be... Hazelwoods. There you go. Hazelwoods sauce bottle. Right, let's have a little look along here and see what we can see. There are loads of bottlenecks. More bottlenecks than the M25. And we've got a jar. Oh, is that a crunchy pickle jar? It is. I love crunchy pickle jars. I don't know why, but they really amuse me. Oh, I think we'll have that one. Oops, a spider. I don't know if he's picking up on the camera. I can't get too close, otherwise he'd go out of focus. I think he's gone. More bottlenecks. A bit of a brick. Not a whole one. Do you want to see what I found? Oh, go on then, let's have a look. I found that little bottle. Oh, that's a cute one. And then this one is mm -hmm. amber and it's got something, I believe, written on the Ooh. shoulder. I'll tell you what, we clean it up and I'll show you it on the live show. Saturday night, 9pm UK time. Same every week, we have a quiz, we have a chat, we show our finds all nicely cleaned up and have a lot of fun. Don't forget, see you there. And what else did you and get? And that, I believe, is a Bakelite backing of a uh, light fitting. Right, oh yes. See the light flex would have come mm. through there. There's something on the top of there as well written, but that would have been where the light fitting hung from the ceiling. Yep. Probably back in the days when we didn't even have a ring main, but plugged everything in. 
the, you know, man would do the iron in with the light, with the iron plugged into the light yes, socket. Yes, I can remember that. Yeah, the good old days. Mm. Mm, I think I prefer the convenience of plugs everywhere. Yes. <laughs> and then most people think, oh, well, Phil, you're taking that to throw away because obviously it's a bit of scrap, which it is, a bit of scrap plastic that um, seems to have no purpose but may find a purpose because I still have a thought in mind for creating a particular item at some point in the future and that could well be part of it. Oh, brilliant. Now is that a pit pipe bowl? No. <laughs> Not unless it's a squidgy pipe. Oh well, it looked good. I think it's plastic. Oh no, it's cardboard. Probably from an old firework. Hello. Hello, what are you doing up there, Mr. Johnson? I have some pines. Ooh, lovely. Let's have a look. Try not to fall. And if you do, we promise we won't laugh. I tell you what. Mm -hmm. I may have an even better find now for you. Ooh, right. There's a little bottle again. Finding quite a few oh, yes. smallish <laughs> screw tops. Yeah. And here we have a little jar but it's an amber with a bottomless very pretty now in all honesty mm -hmm. i didn't realize the bottom was off that until i passed <laughs> to you i didn't i picked it up i carried it down and didn't notice it's nicely done though. it's quite clean cut that's I almost like that. as good as i can do with my bottle cutter mm. and i know that you like your oh, jars, yes, I do like my jars and you like them of similar sizes yep so there's two Ooh, I'll be able it's to decorate those. Nice Very deep nice. deep rim on that. Yep. And I think it's got a similar rim on that. And similar Perfect. stature. But as I just turned around. Mm -hmm. What have you seen? What have you seen? Well, see what I just walked down. Yeah. Look where. Ooh. Who's the bottom of a blue bottle? No, no. How is it hole? How much is that? Right, let's savour the moment. Let's try the wiggle. Well, it feels like it's more than a bottom. Start pulling. It's coming out. Do you think this is a milk of magnesia? And is it whole? Oh, I think it's whole. Look at that. And I would say by the colour white in there, it's a milk of magnesia. Nothing written on it. But look at that. Yeah, but they, they kind of stylized their bottle in a very ordinary way. But it certainly did the trick. You know it's milk of magnesia. Lovely. This week, folks, you're in for a very special treat because instead of going over to the shed, we're gonna send you over to the studio where Caroline is going to transform an object that I created. All of you were saying, oh, Phil, you could do this. Oh, Phil, you could do that. Folks, I'm not good at the pretty pretty. I see the practical, I see the history. Caroline sees the beauty. So here you see teamwork in action as we let Caroline loose on the teapot tower water feature. Hello everyone, how lovely to have you here in the studio with me again. So you can see this is the teapot fountain that Phil has made. I can't stand it up in here. If I stand it up, all you can see is a big blob of the green on the top of the teapot. So I'm going to work on this lying down then put it into position and stick the few things around the back and then you can see what it looks like so i've got some bits and pieces here if i see plants in these little pots these false ones i pick these up they're usually a pound and you get lots of flower florals and foliage on there i've got some other bits from a tile i had from the pound shop i've got these from the charity shop and i got a tub of sea glass and this is going to be the pièce de résistance look at that it's a little mouse in a teacup. So he's going to be on here as well. Now, Phil always says he's not into blinging things up himself. He likes them just in this raw state. Now, I know many of you do too, but I still think that there are those of us who'd like a little bit of something on here now. Maybe I'm going to go over the top. I thought, well, if I'm going to do something, I might as well go over the top. So here we go now. Phil had stuck this little mushroom of blue tack in here just to try it out to see if the fountain was working. So I'm going to take that out. And over here, I've got, I'll put my gloves on, because apparently you can have a skin reaction to this milliput. There we go, super fine white. 
I've been kneading this. You've got to take, you've got two separate fingers in there. You take a little bit off each and then you knead it for seven minutes, which is really wearing on the hands. And then you can use it and it'll dry over three to four hours. So I'm now going to fill in this little teapot spout with something a little more practical and long lasting. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of bling. You've got to have a bit of bling. Now there are some gaps here that you can see this pipe and I think that definitely needs dealing with. I've got some sea glass here and river glass that I'm going to use in this. Now I'm not going to put it in until I stand this up. But you may have noticed last week when Phil was showing you how this works, it should have come with a whittle warning. It was so loud, the water pouring noise, I thought it was oh, almost uncomfortable. So I'm going to fix that just by putting some river glass in here to just above the surface of the water. It should make a nicer noise. But the first thing we need to do is something to decorate this because it looks like there's a big blob of milliput in the end. Probably because there's a big blob of milliput in the end. Right, so some glue on the bottom of our sunflower. Just in case the epoxy resin doesn't grip to plastic. Don't know if it does or not. And then pop it in there. Like that. Oh, wow, yes, already it's looking a million times better, I think. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of greenery over this little tube that the water travels up. You haven't got to hold these in place for long, just until the glue starts to cool off a little bit and then they'll hold themselves in while the glue finishes cooling. I'm just leaving a little gap here so you can see the teapot spout. It's lovely to see all the crazing on the glaze here. Some people might decide to hide that, but I think it looks lovely. I don't think this looks lovely on the top. We'll be doing something with that in a minute. Right, that seems to be settling nicely there. So now I'm going to put on our garland of sunflowers. Now I'm going to fill in with a few of these purple things again. Just chop the ends off because they're a bit long. In true whimsical style, we stick that one up there too. Up there too. Like that. Oh yes, that looks sufficiently whimsical, I think. Now I'm just going to glue this onto the top there, which I'm going to have to stand up for again, see if I can see what I'm doing. I'm slide this down. Like that. This is just a piece of plastic that's holding everything up. And then I'm not sure how much of this is going to stick. So I'm going to give it turns and turns of glue and then pop it on there. So now I'm going to go for some really seriously floral bling to go on the top because I was going to just put a flower there. But I thought, oh, why put one flower when you can put a lot? If we're going to go over the top with this, let's really go over the top. So I'm just going to make what they call a flag, which is like a double-ended display. So we overlap those two sections there and then... One either direction of these two here, whoops. And then one flower either way. One there, one there. So everything is overlapping everything else. And then, sorry, this isn't really very informative. I'm a bit far away from the camera down there. Wrap it round a few times. And then I use my pliers to twist it so you can get a really tight twist. Cut off the pointy ends. Right, so now I'm going to take a sunflower 
and stick it in the middle there. So more glue. I love using hot glue. It's amazing how many glue sticks you get through, especially when you put as much on as I do. Really good coating. You can see the steam coming off that, I think. That's how hot it is. You will burn yourself if you touch that. And then hold it in place. Now be careful if you do that, you're going to touch the back of the glue. So make sure that your fingers are well away from the hot bit. Unless you've got a thumb protector on, which I can't find. It's sure somewhere I can't find it. I do have one. And now this just needs gluing up on there in front of our little mouse and that'll hide this part of the handle and also any unfortunate gluing signs on the front of the little mouse. I'll put a couple of gallons of glue on there and then on it goes. And now any excuse for a ribbon and a bow. I love bows. I'm going to make a two loop bow with this so you just make two loops and you tie them in a knot wiggle them about as you pull and they'll make a really pretty bow and the tails naturally go in the right direction which doesn't always happen if you make bows any other way and we can pop that in there just because i love bows so let's put this up on my display i'm going to put the sea glass or the river glass bit of both i think onto where this water's coming in and then i'll show you what it looks like It's lovely this time of year with all these upturned and shoveled up bits of earth and soil but spring is bringing the grass back and the little weeds and plants. You can't keep new life away from an old rubbish dump for long. And there are all the brown leaves and the fallen trees of the winter. And they're all getting forgotten about now because everything new is turning bright green. Oh, there's a bumblebee. Ooh, there's the jar. Go on, Mr. Johnson, do the excavation. Is it whole? Drum roll, please. Looking good. Oh, yes, it is. This hole is full of mud. Ooh. Anything written on it? I don't think so. I think it's another, it's very similar to the two I already got. Mm. So it could be a set of three here. Oh, very nice. There you go. Thank you. Have that. Ooh, I've just seen something with some writing on. It's not a whole thing, but let's have a look. Good. It's a white tile, but it was printed on the back. Oh. I've never seen other printing on the back. This is usually just in relief on the back. Probably Richard, something like that, Richards, Orchards, one of those sort of endings. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Hello. I have a couple of finds, but I also have washed your blue bottle. Oh, it's looking much better. Now that we're down better. nearer the river, perhaps we can get a little better shot of the actual beauty of that blue glass. Probably the most common use of blue glass, milk and magnesia, I would imagine, but still doesn't take anything from the beauty. I quite agree. Ah, there we go. I'm glad you agreed, dear. I've also got something else that's blue. Ooh, yes, right. we may have returned from Yorkshire, but we can still find an egg cup or two. Oh, that's a nice one. Not a very stylized mm, egg cup in its day. Mm. Yeah, but... Shame it's a bit broken, but it's still a nice egg cup, that. Well, a nice form to it, isn't mm. it? I'm not quite sure what it says on the bottom there. I think it's just where it was made, possibly. Probably made in England, I'm going to guess. Possibly, or if it was the 60s, possibly made in Hong Kong. Could be. Because quite Could a lot be. of products were made over there at the time. Mm. And a little handle. Oh, look at that. A sweet little handle. Very nice. I'm sure we'll come up with a use for that. And do you want to see what I found? Oh, go on then. Go now, on it's then. not quite a bottle or anything man-made, but look at that. Oh, 
Oh, that's a neat. Remember we had that huge piece of ivy in the uh, yes, garden? I think that's a small piece of ivy. It's, it's a miniature version. You could put that with a, in one of your crafts in a false garden with something growing up I it. I could, couldn't I? I think that would look lovely. Oh, fence. I really like that, so I'm going to have that. Now I've spotted something red down there. I'm going to send Phil down and very useful to have around. Looks like a foot. It does look like a foot, doesn't it? It is a foot. It's a foot. I think it's a... It's definitely... The lower leg, limb, and foot of a red person. Oh, ooh, the what? Whoops. Or a bee. Yep. That's it's a foot. Very modern, I think. It's got the C stamp on the bottom. So, oh, I don't know. What do you reckon? Something like a superhero or something? Yeah, but they could find a purpose. You never know. We could. If not, it can find a bin. Yes. <laughs> One or the other is going in the bag. You know, the number of times we've said. Well, this is probably our last visit to this particular dump. We still come back and we still find more interesting and peculiar and historical things. But the one thing this dump has turned up, as well as our Eiffel Tower, that was a beautiful find. Yep. Yep, and I managed to make something with that. And our first ever whole marmalade jar with the, the writing on it. I believe it was the Dundee marmalade jar that we found on the, on the dump down here. And of course, we also found a teapot, but it was in about 20 pieces. That's the, that was the first big jigsaw I assembled, was my Brown Betty teapot. But we also found quite a few of these. Yep. Slightly better than this. <laughs> there, that Our be insulators. We have found them all shapes and sizes down here. And we even found a couple of anti-bird exploding devices, which we didn't know that's where it was. In fact, we thought it was something off a bathroom. <laughs> but Richard Serridge, our go-to man on the insulator front who has a phenomenal collection, he let us know what they were. Well, not only have we found wonderful things at this dump, we've also had the opportunity to share it with friends because the Crafty Caravan has joined us down here. And quite recently, Richard and two of his friends, Jack and Jake, they joined me down here as well in search of, you guessed it, insulators. The difference between that day two weeks ago and today the weather oh boy have a look for yourself as we just go back two weeks and share the time i spent here with richard jake and jack hi there everyone we're having some fun here today the weather is wet the sd card decides to develop an error so i don't know if i've already got footage of introducing the boys or not but fortunately, they're not the sort of guys to run away when there's a bundle of insulators lying around on the floor. Because today, I'm down at the dump with Richard Serridge, who's the man in the middle. <laughs> on either side, we've got Jake and Jack, but a bit like Ant and Deck, I can't tell you which is which, <laughs> but we'll get used to it as we go along. And it's great to actually be able to put a face to the name, because all of you will know Richard, I'm sure, from the chat as when it comes to insulators, he's the go-to guy for all the information. But according to the two boys, they tell him all the answers. Pretty much. <laughs> and as you can see, he's already got insulator in hand <laughs> and a carrier bag ready to fill with goodies. Yeah. So we're going to get off and have a look. But uh, how's your stay in Wales been, Richard? Wet. But at least the major storms have dropped. Yeah. So you've been able to get out? Yeah, because... Um Oh, we've walked miles. I've had to strap my knee up as well. <laughs> oh, you've come out in sympathy with Caroline. Yeah. Caroline's not here with me today. She's so wanting to meet the lads, but of course she's done a knee in as well at the yeah. moment. So it's it's an occupational hazard. Mm. <laughs> but i um, glad you're having a good time even if it's wet. Oh, so. yes. Yeah, we've had it quite good so far. This is sort of yesterday was the first day of rain. But other yeah. than that, we've had it quite dry and sunny, but a bit cold. But Well, it's great to have you with us and I'm sure everyone's enjoying being here on the dump with us so we're just going to take you over now and show everyone if it's still there that that one post that was down oh. with the bits on so we led across right. mm. oh yeah that's the, uh, yeah. oh yeah yeah that that oh, bird exploder oh. didn't do as well <laughs> as the <laughs> others <exploded. laughs> that, yeah that was a big bird that landed on there and blew the thing yeah that'll be one with the uh, replacement ones probably so at least at least it was here 
Yeah. Because <laughs> I was worried that it would have got buried because the land is continually moving. But this is a bit further away. Now then, folks, for those who are interested in artwork, and I know a lot of you are because you follow Caroline on her channel where she does art and craft, here's something not everyone may know. Mr. Richard Serridge is not only nuts about insulators, but he's also a very good artist. And I mean that, I've seen some of his work and it is brilliant. <laughs> what sort of things do you do? Um, well, it's mainly landscape sort of artwork, but it's always on reclaimed materials because I like the texture of it, the way it comes through the paint and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you like art and you like <laughs> reusing and recycling and reuse materials that sounds like the perfect place for you to have a look so we'll put a link in the video to some of Richard's work but Richard tells me he's also going to start putting his work up for sale he's got a few prints on Etsy now so folks check out Richard's work you won't be disappointed so what is it you do Jack? I'm a blacksmith I make things out of metal and normally have very black hands but while oh. we're here mudlarking and looking for insulators, they're actually clean for once. No, see, most of us get dirty when we're out <laughs> searching and we're cleaning our office job, but it's the other way around for you. Yes, yeah. So the things you make, uh, what sort of stuff? Decorative ironwork, and I fix a lot of farm machinery. Right. Um, I turn horseshoes into funny things rather than making them. <laughs> now, your horseshoes that you turn into funny things, is there somewhere we can see those? Have you got a Facebook page or anything? I have got a Facebook page, yeah. I've got Facebook and Instagram, and I'm building a website at the moment. Excellent. Well, that's great. There are folks. We have met a real-life blacksmith, and we will put the link to the Facebook page below if you'd like to see strange things made out of horseshoes. And I know our people, you will all want to see strange things made out of horseshoes. Interesting day. We've got an artist. Got a blacksmith, and I don't know what we've got behind us for you. I don't know what Jake gets up to in his spare time. You... Not, nothing is special. No, nothing special. Uh, yeah, I work on a narrow gauge railway. Oh, so come I drive on! Track work, maintenance work. Oh, this is the kind of group you want to be in, isn't it? When the guy who does nothing interesting drives trains for goodness <laughs> sake. I just feel so inadequate for these guys. Every, every day of work's a play day. Ah, oh, now that's what you want. <laughs> uh, you can't beat that, can you, folks, when you've got the kind... You know what they say, if you can find something you love to do and find someone daft enough to pay you to do it, you never got to work a day in your life. Well, I've had a great time with the boys chatting. I know Caroline's going to be so jealous when she edits this because she wasn't able to be with us. But um, it's been good. And the rain has actually stopped and held off for us, which can't be bad, gentlemen. Thank you so much for popping to see us, Richard. And Jake and Jack, thank you so much. It's been a joy. I hope that whilst it has rained, you go back with good memories. Yeah. And at least a few insulators in your pocket. It's been brilliant. Okay, well, bye for now. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Well, I hope you just enjoy... Well, I hope you enjoyed the journey. <laughs> my wife's laughing at me. <laughs> it's only my third take. I'm sure I'm going to get my words out this time. <laughs> Stop laughing. I'm not. Okay. Oh, so get serious now. <laughs> Seriously, folks, he says, trying not to laugh. Hope you enjoyed that trip back to a wet day here in Wales, but a wonderful day. So brilliant to meet one of the characters that we've got to know through the chat on the live show, through the comments that Richard sends in, and to meet his friends as well. And they are talking about making videos of their own adventures in the future. So that's something to look out for. But while we were traveling back in time, I did find one thing. Oh, what did you find, Mr. Well, Johnson? no, I said you like those pots in threes. Hmm. I'll have to find another two. Oh, got two and then you'll have though. two threes, because <laughs> at the moment you've got two twos. Very because nice. I've just found another very nice. similar pot. Do love those. They're so useful and also so easy to decorate. And they're quite tactile. They, I don't know what it is, but there's a smoothness to this glass where it's been in the ground so long. So there we go. I'll keep looking, dear, and see if I can get you up to six, and then you'll have two sets of three. Okay. Now, while you were talking, I did see this over here, and I'm wondering if it's a marble. I've been looking along here, hoping that the frost and the rain has taken some soil off. This looks like somebody's walked in here and stepped down. Now, is that a marble? 
Oh no, it's a shell. It did look like a white marble. Oh well. They did like their cockles around here at some point. Oh, it would warm the cockles of your heart. Considering we're so far from the sea, we don't have to find some cockle shells. Yep. Oh, there's a hoverboard in there. I don't think I can get it because it's too deep. Let's have a look. Bill! Can we borrow you? Right, so I've given Phil my grabby thingy. And there's the hoverboard. Can he get it out of the water? Well, it's certainly too deep to go in, isn't it? It is. It's about three feet deep there. <laughs> this is my stick. <laughs> Disappearing Ooh, into the water. That's very deep. See, if I push now, it would make some really good video footage, wouldn't it? No, I think we're going to have to wait until the waters recede a little bit in the summer and come down and get it then. Rescue it from the water. Well, Phil is still trying to get the hoverboard, which is looking extremely unsuccessful. I've seen something here and it's round and I think, I think I can reach it. Oh, there's wires sticking out of it. Let's have a look. Oh, something written on it. Uh, some sort of microphone. I don't think that's very antique, is it? Well, there's all this water here. And I've got my wellies on. Just seems such a waste not to get in. So come on, pop your wellies on. We're going in. Oh, they come to arrest me for wearing my wellies in the water. Well, there doesn't seem to be a lot to find in this part of the river, so they can get out, find some stones, and throw some stones in to plant a little bit of stone for them. Oh, I do love throwing stones into the river. Oh, this one's got a fossil on it. Look at that. Oh, I'll leave that out of the river. And we'll throw this brick in. It's a bit deeper there. Here we go. Oh, that is so fulfilling. This one. Finally, we'll try this big flat one. Oh, wasn't that fun? Oh, wow! You got it! I'm not a man who gives up easily. Wow, I give up. I didn't think you were ever going to get it out of the bottom of the river. Whoa! It's a bit waterlogged. It is a bit, isn't it? I don't think that's ever going to go again. If it suddenly started up now, you'd look really silly. <laughs> it would whiz off with you on it. I'm like a youngster. Ooh. Still does the wobble, look. Huh? Oh, yes. But it's a bit broken. It's, it's a lot broken. So I think that's for the tip. That is for the tip. That's got to go. But it did, certainly doesn't belong in the river, so we'll get that out of here. Should we turn it over and have a little look? It's so interesting. Oh, oh, there's nothing to see there, is there? No. I think you could see a bit of the magadjins through there. Oh, yeah. That's where I managed to hook it with my stick. Right. Okay, folks, I've got the camera at a moment. Just to save Caroline doubling back, because before she distracted me to dig out the hoverboard from the riverbed, I was examining an object over here. I suppose I could say I found a brick, but it's a bit of a big brick. It's got a name on it. But it's not coming home with me. Let me show you why. There you go. To give you an idea of the size of that, I'll just put my boot there. And I'll put it a little in perspective. Intriguing shape. Almost like a 50p. And on the top here, we definitely have something written. But for the life of me, I can't at the moment figure out what it is. There's definitely something here which could be L4 or it could be an L with an arrow pointing up so that we know the position for it to go. But looking through the lens, I think when I blow this up on the camera, I'll have more information. So I'll be able to share that with you on the live show. Right, that one's staying. Let's go find some more things that we can take with us.
Have you been finding things? I have. First of all, hmm. just to show that sauce is as popular in the old days and today in Wales as it is in the rest of the country. There's a <laughs> few sauce bottles. There are. Very saucy. <laughs> I'll just put those down a moment. And it's an interesting little piece because it's, it's, really little it's a little bowl. dish, pressed glass. Not a fruit bowl as in fruit, you keep your fruit in it, but we used no. to have tinned fruit in a little bowl like this. With ideal milk, oh, I had. yes, ideal milk. Yes, yes, indeed. But the reason I picked it up, I wouldn't normally think, oh, let's take Caroline a smashed piece of glass. If I have the camera with me, fair enough. But uh, the reason I brought it is I wondered if we can get that little piece there to come away. Well, that would be good if you if could I, do that. Because then I've seen you make a number of things where you mount something, a half a dish or whatever, and use it as part of a craft. Yep. So if that would come off, and there's nothing ventured, nothing gained. If it don't come off, then we'll pop it in the bin. But if it does come off, it'll show up in the future in one of Caroline's craft videos over on her craft channel. So there we go. Win-win or in the bin. I found something down here. Now this may be crazy. I think it's a part of a car. An ear holes or something and it's bendy and it's dirty. And Heating it's plastic. system? Yeah, I think something like that. Heating system of the car, I think yeah. so. But what I'm thinking is, can I take that and do something with it? Ooh. I am tempted to come up with a project for that. So I'm going to take that and if I can't come up with anything, I'll show you. If I don't, I won't. I can see a shark. Not really, I can. Can you see it? But maybe I'm facing the wrong direction because if I turn round and go down here. See, I told you I could see a shark. <laughs> I think that somebody, bottle diggers or fishermen or people just coming down here to party of an evening have left their bottle opener. It's a shark shaped one. So I did see a shark. Guess what I found? What have you found? I found two things. Right. Well, I found three things, but three it's two things. things. Right. It's kind of two of one thing, which makes one thing, and then one of another thing. Oh, that's very complex. Show us your finds. I found a brick. <laughs> it wouldn't be the same if you hadn't. Bristol. But there's a company name on the top. Catty Brook Brick. Catty Brook Brick Company Limited, Bristol. Now, the first Bristol brick I ever found was on this river, about a mile or so up. I'm not sure if it was that company. But this is a lovely, well-worn brick that still has a clear name on it. So I think that should go on with me. Add right. to the collection. Okay, you need a couple of bricks because you haven't got many. And the two things <clears> I <throat> found that'll make one thing is, darling, I always deliver. Not only do I dig up rubbish from the bottom of the river for you. Hmm. But I've got you two mobile jars. Oh, there we go. We've got two lots of three jars. Now, Very nice. This well, is a more. <laughs> This is the moment for a confession. What? I found two. Yeah. Then I saw a third. Right. And I thought, I've got to take it, even if it does mean I've got to find another two. Yes. And as I bent over to pick up the third, I dropped the first one I found, <laughs> and it is no more. Oh, so you were saved from yourself? I was. Um, it was one of those times when an accident proved helpful, because I haven't got to find another two. You have two sets of three, love, to do some craft. Brilliant. Hmm. We were down there, but I've come up to this bit because it hasn't been dug by bottle diggers or anything, but I'm hoping that the rain and the frost over the last few weeks will have exposed some things. We can't see anything at a distance, so we get really close and have a look. What? Is that what I think it is? <laughs> My plan worked. Let's have a look. Oh, it's a tiny, tiny piece of pipe. Now look how thin that is. Oh, oh, well, I'm really pleased. I didn't know we were going to find any pipe stem today. It was looking a bit grim on the pipe stem front, but we got one. So even if that's the only one we see, I'm happy. Oh, is this another one? Ah, let's play. Is this twig or pipe stem? It's twig. What about you? Oh, another piece. Yeah. If right. it is, this will be exceptional because I think we've only found three pieces of pipe stem in all of our visits here. Yep. So let's play. Is this twig or pipe stem? Pipe stem? Oh, is that another piece? Oh, wow. Let's play. Twig or pipe stem? What is it? Twig, pipe stem, twig, pipe stem. It's another piece of pipe stem. So there's three pieces. 
in this small area i do wonder if maybe it's the same pipe broken anymore Let's well if it is where's the bowl mm. <laughs> that's the search now well there's a nail oh that is equilling mm -hmm. i think our total finds of pipe stems on this dump in the last year and a half yeah i would think so yeah that was really good what have you got? A bit of tile? Yes. It's oh, it's not the most exciting tile in the world, is it? No, but it's always worth checking when they're face down because we have found some gorgeous ones here. We, we have. We found the daffodil one here. Mm. Um, found a little bit of terracotta. Shame there wasn't more oh, of it. Oh, look, if There's that had been half the pot, it, it. it would have been nice. There's something stamped on it. Mm. But uh, as everyone can tell, it is definitely, definitely getting too hot here. It is. I know that sounds like a mad thing to say in Wales in March but it is a boiling hot day so different to two weeks ago uh, so the scarf is around my waist the coat is around my waist and if we stay here much longer the jump will be coming off as well but it is a gorgeous day it is absolutely lovely hope you're enjoying it as much as we are because we're having a fantastic time earlier we found that uh, little back piece to a light fit in mm -hmm. that would have hung from the ceiling here we find one in exactly the same material same era but would have screwed to the ceiling or Ooh. to a wall yep and it's got paint on it where people have painted the ceiling so it doesn't look baker light anymore yep here we go a little bit of our history and while you were talking i've seen two things i want to have a look at this is the one an old biro from the children who used to be in the school here probably oh i don't know probably 30 years ago that one and somewhere up there, I did spot a jar, a little paste pot, a meat paste pot, not a wallpaper paste pot. There we go, it's a little cute one. Oh, Phil spotted a bottle What's as well. This? What's this? I can only see the end, so it's a moment of discovery for us all. Ooh, oh, a square jar. Oh, there we go, I didn't break it. <laughs> Here we go, get the muck out. One square jar. Very nice. Ridges on the bottom. Hmm. Nice. That's a nice one there. It is very nice shape. No, look at this. Now I think that's a rubber wheel off a toy. You know, I could be wrong, but that's what I think it is. And is this over here a pipe bowl? Oh no, look, it's a hazelnut. The squirrel's been in and eaten some of it. Well, I'm loving this. I just never tired of returning to this place. It's on our doorstep. It is beauty beyond words. And it's good for the soul. It's also good fun, being together, finding the things. Hope you've enjoyed this little trip with us as much as we have. And even when I was here in the rain, I was thrilled to be here because I had the chance to meet three lovely guys who I'm sure are so representative of all the lovely people that we have got to know but never met so far but if you have enjoyed today don't forget give us a thumbs up <laughs> and if you'd like to see all the finds cleaned up join us on the live show tomorrow night nine o'clock that's Saturday nine o'clock UK time and until the next time whatever else happens have fun Bye! Bye.